eyes, you always sound great. And I invite you to come on in and take a seat. We're going to be getting started here with our announcements and service. Be plenty of time to shop and talk after. My name is Debbie McDonald, and I have some announcements for you this morning. But before I begin, I want to take just a moment to honor the practitioner that's holding the light for us this morning, practitioner Brian Atkins. Thank you, Brian. Brian is just one of the many practitioners that we hear, have here at Seaside. And our practitioners, it is our honor to pray with you, to pray for you. So please do not leave here with anything on your heart today. We are here to pray. You can pray uh, or request prayer in many different ways. One is a written prayer request. You can put in the prayer request chest. It is over by Brian. Or there's also one out in the foyer. We also have our prayer chapel out in the foyer. You can go over there and get a prayer with a practitioner following service. Our, our phone numbers are all in Inside Seaside. You can call us and get a prayer, or you can schedule a private appointment for a, a longer session if that's something that speaks to you. So it is really our joy to pray with you, so please utilize us. It's like summer is in full swing here at Seaside, and it's only May, but we have got some stuff happening. First of all, it's time to sign up for uh, one of Callie's uh, wonderful retreats. It's her fifth annual yoga and adventure retreat in Costa Rica. It is a wonderful opportunity. It's limited to six women, so those six lucky women that get there first will get to go. I got the honor of going to one of her Montana retreats, and it's just an absolute joy. It's a fun place of sisterhood and deepening spirituality and and Callie just puts on a really good show, so it's fun. And so sign up for that at the Seaside Sisters table today. I'm sure Callie will be over there. Also today we have our bookstore is having a special blowout sale of a lot of uh, paperbacks. I think they're mostly used books, but the price you can't beat. There's a dollar for soft covers and two dollars for hard covers. So go on out and see what the bookstore has there for you. Today, our teens are getting ready for camp, and they're going to come up and tell you all about it. Here's Reverend Lorianne, one of her lovely teens. Hey, you know, I heard we were having a non-car wash. What's that? Well, a non-car wash is when you do the windshields. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when you do the vacuum in the vacuum, me. That's right, and when you do have that done, what do the proceeds go to? Our teen camp. Teen camp. So please stop by. There are other ways to support the teens today. We have a pizza and salad. I made the pizza. I got up at 2 in the morning. Pizza, salad, and after a service today, we also are having um, a way to raise money by buying Mother's Day cards so you have if you haven't purchased one. So we'll see you out by the uh, out by the non car wash. The cost? The cost is twenty dollars. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. I, it's only ten dollars. Like seriously. See you there. There you go. Yeah. But you'll take twenty, right? You, you can donate whatever you like. We have five teens this year that are wanting to go to a week summer camp up in Idlewild. It's a fabulous opportunity for our teens, so please help support them in, in making their dreams come true. We have an event coming up Saturday, May the 17th. It's a first-time event for us, and we hope to be an annual event. Our special needs ministry is hosting a um, resource fair. We have, I just heard today, 44 vendors so far that are signed up to come. It's May the 17th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We have all sorts of wonderful things. There's raffles, there's giveaways, there's all sorts of activities for the children to do at each vendor's station. So what our goal is to bring our community together with our special needs families and just show all of the wonderful resources that are available to everybody. So it's absolutely free. We want you all to come on out and be part of it. It's going to be a full day here at Seaside and lots of fun and lots of activities. So come be part of that. Oh, 
and they are, could use some volunteers. So if you're available to volunteer that day, Kathy's right there waving. See Kathy, and she would be glad to take your phone number. So see Kathy for that. Also, it's time for Gourmets for God, and Cindy's going to come up and talk to you about that. Um, it's time for Gourmets for God, which is like the funnest, most exciting, most wonderful thing we do. <laughs> and it lasts all summer. That's the best part. Parties all summer long. Um, and you can have whatever kind of party you want to have. We have people who host. We have people who attend. Um, or you can do both. Um, you can do whatever you want. Sky's the limit. You can do a barbecue. You can do a Hawaiian luau. You can do Oktoberfest. You can do Christmas in July. You can do um, hot dogs and, and s'mores on the beach. You name it, you can do it. If you can't think up an idea and you really want one, come talk to us at the table. We're doing new things this year that are even more exciting than last year. There's a lot of new options so more people can attend. So please stop at the table. We'll tell you all about it and uh, come party with your seaside friends. Yay, thanks, good job, good job. We just have the party going, going, going. We're kind of like the party church, I think. We just keep on having parties. So one we have coming up is May 30th. We are having Mardi Gras in May. I know it's a little bit late, but we are. We're having May Madness Mardi Gras, Friday, May 30th. I won't sing it. Yay! So a little New Orleans here with our guys. We're going to be having music. We're going to be having a crawfish boil that starts at like 5.30 and then it goes on all night long. We have entertainment, food, food, food galore. Tickets are on sale today. See the gentleman in the family room, the table there at $60. Come and play with all of us. And I think there's some options, too, if you want to just come for the dancing part. So they can tell you all about that uh, back at the table there. Classes. We have two classes starting this week. Reverend Lori is teaching a class, and Dr. Teach Christian is teaching a class starting this week, May 6th. See the education table for that. Also, our cookbook gals are here. We have cookbooks on sale for Mother's Day, yes. And so uh, you get your Mother's Day card from the teens and your cookbook from the cookbook gals, and you're set for Mother's Day. So there you go. And uh, <laughs> last but not least, I just want to say it, save the date. June 1st is graduation. I will be graduating along with three other ministerial students. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> And a bunch of practitioners, so we invite you to come and be part of that. And with that sense of joy and celebration, please stand and greet your neighbor, and please remain standing for the congregation. <laughs> Please remain standing for our congregational song. This morning we're singing, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed, 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 blessed.
So true. Good morning, Seaside. What a joy it is to be with you on this blessed day. This wonderful summer has arrived in North County of San Diego. Woo. And Candace is back on her leg up. Glad to see that. The wounded has returned. So, anyway, I just welcome if you're here for the first time, know that this is a spiritual nexus inspiring us to live our dreams to live our divinity. It is a home where we come together in joy and celebration and in sadness and times of challenge. We are here for one another in a very real and authentic kind of way. It is a place of kindness and caring and truly to take us further into that heart space, into that spiritual place because we put spirit first always. Is a wonderful practitioner of 20 years here at Seaside and that is Kathy Nelson. And I invite you into the stillness. Feeling that vibration moving from your heart. Feeling the call to spirit right here, right now in this holy home where we know the power and the presence moves through each and every one of us. From this summer day, feeling joy in being here, feeling the friendship throughout the sanctuary, the smiles, the love that moves between you, knowing that that is spirit creating and moving through each of us. I know that this morning is blessed by Reverend Dr. Christian Sorensen's talk on designing your happiness by design and by Dr. Kathy Hearn I've had the joy of being here for the first service, so I know what's coming and how powerful it is and how moving it is and how much you're going to carry away, not just in your mind, but in your heart into the rest of your week. I know this is a blessed meeting by all the musicians, by the wonderful singer who's with us this morning, by our band, and by every person who helps put this service together lovingly and with their time. So knowing that and moving into this service today, naming it blessed, beautiful, and holy, I know it is all good. Así será. Continuaremos así 
así será así será Oh, beautiful. Thank you, dear Reverend Fran. And uh, Kathy, where, now where are you? <laughs> she keeps moving around. Let's acknowledge Kathy and thank her for her beautiful invocation. <laughs> That's because you have friends. I got it. <laughs> How is this? Is this good? There we go. I, I think that's good. Okay. Thanks, Carl. Thank you very much. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Kathy Hearn. It's a delight to be here with you today, and I welcome all of you here. I have uh, the wonderful privilege of being the Dean of the School of Spiritual Leadership here at Seaside. We are one of three ministerial training campuses uh, within our organization, Centers for Spiritual Living. And it's a wonderful uh, week here this week because our students are here for spring camp. And the students who are in the room, I'd love to have you stand up so people can see you and let us acknowledge you. So here they are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They are a really interesting bunch of folks. They are really bright, they're very conscious, and they are absolutely dedicated to spiritual service in the world, and they'll be here all week long. They're beginning a class tomorrow with Dr. Christian, and uh, so I hope you have a chance to meet them and say hello, and you'll be inspired, as I am, uh, by who they are and what they're all about. So for those of you who are here for the very first time today, please know how welcome and wanted you are, whoever you are. And wherever you are in your spiritual journey, we do welcome you here to Seaside. And we offer you Seaside as an open, loving, joyous place for you to deepen in your spiritual path, for you to understand more about God or spirit as your life, for you to meet like-minded others who are also traveling the spiritual path. And also Seaside is a place to learn spiritual principles that you can bring into your daily living so that you're actually living spiritually. And that's what we're all about because we are a center for spiritual living. And there is a guest packet for you available out the double doors. Uh, and please do meet Dr. Christian on the way out. We are um, holding a wonderful event here that is a signature event for Seaside. It's June 1st. It is our graduation of our ministerial students. And we also host the graduation for the Southern California practitioners, licensed practitioners who are graduating. And we're pulling together a team of volunteers to serve on that day. And if you would be willing to serve, we will feed you lunch and tell you what you're going to be doing. Food is good. Tell you what you're going to be doing. And uh, come spend the day with us in high celebration. I think you'll enjoy it. One of the first principles I learned when I started on this path was that the way out of pain is through service. And so if you have any kind of pain in your life and you'd like to give of your energy, it will make a tremendous difference. So please come see me after service. All right, I have a reading for you today. It is from Mark Nepo from his book, The Exquisite Risk, and I invite you to turn within. When we can listen deeply, we are strengthened to feel that everything around us lives within us, and everything within us lives as part of the world. When we experience both the circumference and the center of the circle of life at once, we are then in the larger self, the universal self. Emptying ourselves of noise so that we can hear the sacred pulse of things is at the heart of all the meditation practices invoked through the ages. Sooner or later, if we want to feel what it is to be alive in a universe that is alive, we will have to empty ourselves, open our hearts, and listen. The emptying and opening and listening is the practice that allows us to hear the voice of God, whatever name you give it, that resides in each of us. By listening with all of who we are, we are briefly illuminated like stained glass, letting everything move through us in those privileged and enlightened moments. To listen, is to continually give up all expectation and to give our attention completely and freshly to what is before us. In the practice of our days, 
To listen is to lean in softly with the willingness to be changed by what we hear. And so I recognize that we're centered here in the radiant truth that God is all there is. Knowing that we have each come forth from the one, we have come forth as the one in unique and individualized expression. I know that we are here by divine appointment today, that we gather here with love as the truth between our souls because love is the only truth between souls. And how glorious it is to awaken in each other's company and to walk this path of spiritual community, to learn together, to grow together, to serve together. And so I accept today that we are listening, that we are letting go of all the things of the past that do not serve, all of the false ideas that never were were the truth anyway. And what we are opening to and listening to and listening for is the grand design of the universe of joy. Knowing that the divine design of the all is the deepest divine design within each one of us. And so I know that we are created from love, created by love, and created for love. We are created from love, from joy, by joy, and for joy. And we are here to allow this fullness of our being to be beautifully expressed. And so I accept today that we are listening, that we are open to the words that Dr. Christian speaks, and that we are willing to be changed in the deepest place of our being. And that each one of us today, in our own way, awakens to a greater truth of who we are as the beautiful expression of the one. For we are here as the prayer that God is praying. We are here to be the good that is God in expression. And so I give thanks for this. I accept these words find their way into the deepest parts of our being. And we listen and we love and we change and we be. And knowing that this great good is done, I release this word and together we say, and so it is. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Cassie. That was so beautiful. The grand universal plan of joy. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Lynn. That was beautiful, too. And, you know, speaking of that, the Dr. Lynn over there, I'll call him Dr. Lynn. Um, There's a concert coming up, May 23. Go to our music table. There's a poster. Lynn is a part of a group that's 14 in number, and we get 14, let's see, 14 guys and one girl. 14 guys and one girl playing jazz. I got to join this group, I think, you know. I don't have to let me in, but I could join, huh? That never stopped me. But May 23, at 7 o'clock, the door is open. It's a jazz group, and, you know, we support jazz. We have a jazz band every Sunday, and they are avant-garde. They're new, new jazz. It's new, 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 new stuff. And so get your ears. Talk about listening. Open your ears. Listen to this new jazz that could become, in 20 years, it could be, this, you know, the standards that we're playing today. So I have another segue that you love my segues, don't you? Speaking of standards, there is no standard higher than that that uh, Andrew Pettit brings in his joy. Is that right? Andrew Pettit. Would you please welcome him to the stage with no further ado. This is Mr. Andrew Pettit. Good morning. Everyone stand up. Give me some energy. Give me some energy. Slow down, slow down, slow down. A shadow in the clouds or light in the sky Am I getting it wrong or am I getting it right? No, cause all I can take is one One step at a time Look at me, 
I'm trying every day I fall down, get back up, make mistakes I try it once I let you see me I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking 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 some people say walking takes too long oh. I say with walking you can't go wrong yeah. Why should you rush your way through life? You won't get very far Running all the time Look at me, I'm trying every day I fall down, make mistakes, get back up I'm trying every day You see me, I'm walking I want you to say, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. You say it, go. Say, say, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. You go. Now you got to walk. Ready? Here we go. Say left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Come on. I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, you say. getting us our exercise and warmed up before we get here. Nice job. I'm walking. I'm walking in spirit for sure. All right, so this morning's message is happiness by design. Sure beats the alternative, doesn't it? <laughs> I could be miserable by default. I could, you know. It's this happiness thing, which is really the Dalai Lama's uh, teaching. It is a natural way in which we can walk this world. It, it is right. It is easy. It is the grace. And um, just read a wonderful description of happiness, and it comes from a book of ministerial students, uh, welcome, and it came from a book your dean has given me to read. Dr. Kathy Hearn gave me this book of Stephen Cope's, um, The Great Work of Your Life, and one of the chapters in there is about John Keats, a wonderful mystical writer, and um, he, he, he lost his dad at an early age, his mom died at 14, and he died at 25 uh, of tuberculosis, and so how come he knows happiness? And uh, w one of his evolutions in consciousness was what he was recognized was the negative capabilities, being able to function in the realm of uncertainty, of doubt, of not knowing, without having an irritated mind searching for the reasons and the answers for these difficulties and, and these hard places. The um, people who evaluate poets said he really, in the last couple of years of his life, transcended that place of con uh, contemplatives where they talk about things in pairs of opposites, meaning uh, praise, blame, 
bright, uh, uh, dark, and you just move into that sense of non-dualistic expression where it's just the oneness, where uh, earlier writings was battling, surviving, the journey, struggling through the cliffs. He merged to writing about just um, the sunrise or the ripening of grain or the aging of wine or the natural nutrients that comes from the soil into the flower that brings forth the bloom. It is no longer in contrast to the dark or the negative. And so what he said about happiness is wherein lies happiness, which is a weird, a poetic way of saying, what's happiness? <laughs> wherein lies happiness? He said, it's in our fellowship with the essence. I thought, wow, what a clear concept. It's in our fellowship. It's in our connection with the essence. It is with the essence of life. It is with the essence of what is. It's not with what I think it should be. It's in the essence of what is, and it's not groping, holding, or having to own, but it is a matter of what he said is surrendering to the essence of what is, is where one finds their happiness. Surrendering to who you are, being who you are in this life, not caught up in trying to be someone else, because you can't be the best to anybody else. You can only be the best yourself. It is a matter of becoming who you are and, and who you're intended to be in this world. And when you know that God is all things in your spirit, how much more happy can you be to recognize that you're God, right? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing outside of God. God is omnipresent. It is omniactive. It is the activity that you're having. The, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you might ask, so why am I catching hell in my life? <clears throat> and it's because we're not catching the reality. What we're catching is our perception of reality. And as we catch our perception of what we think reality is, and we try to bring that down to earth. We are living in uh, the law of mind and action, is what Ernest Holmes talks about. The law of mind and action is the replication, it is the duplication, it is the manifestation of your perception. It is the sum total of your beliefs that is showing up in your life and in your world and demonstrating in your life at the level of your belief. You are the one who has to move beyond the perceptions and have a faith. You know, it says in the first chapter, uh, or 11th chapter, verse 1 in, in Hebrews, when it talks about faith, it's the chapter on faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the substance of things that aren't here yet. It is the substance of things not yet seen. It is a knowingness of that something you've already walked there. Like Kathy, wonderful practitioner today, was talking and praying about what she had seen already. She was coming from a place of knowingness. Faith, people in deep faith are these faith walkers. They have been there. They know what is there. And what they know is the reality and the truth of the presence of God. They are not caught up in their perceptions of what has been. You know, Gandhi said, "Let happiness is what, he said, happiness, what it is, is when your words, your thoughts, and your actions are in harmony. What it is, is when your thoughts, your words, and your actions are in harmony. And how do they come in harmony? Is when you're coming from a place of knowingness, not a perception, not thinking that may be, may not be. It's not coming from trying to cling and make something happen. It's coming from a deep knowingness that God is everywhere. I am of that, and this is what I'm bringing forth, and I'm going to have my life live from a design of being happy. I'm not going to be reactionary to what's going on. I'm not going to be a victim to what took place. You know how many people I've worked with at age 50, they're still complaining about their moms, you know, how their parents screwed them up. It's like my dad could have done better. Well, I'll tell you, if your dad or mom could have done better, they would have done better. And if you're still talking about your mom and dad and the way they messed you up on the inside at 50, you know what? I have to say, grow up. Come on. I mean, you can hold on to your perception and say, this is the evidence why I am miserable, mean, and nasty. <laughs> or you can choose to create from design. Well, you know, it's automatic triggers. I get triggered. It's just in my subjective lurking in the labyrinth of the darkness of my being. You know what? We rely too much on people. We need to rely on God more. 
I'll just make it real simple there. We're blaming the parents. We're blaming other individuals. And what we're doing is we're giving our power away to what was and what is, is that God is omnipresent. You get to be the omni-activity that God is having as your very life. You get to design your life from a place of choice. You can live your life from default or you can live from design. And I choose to live from design and creating happiness because that is the natural state in which you were intended to be as you walk in this world. And doesn't mean you get everything you want in your life, but if you're busy trying to make things happen in your world and they're not happening you can be bitter and you can be pitiful and you have a choice you can be pitiful or you can be powerful but you don't get both <laughs> and when you choose to be pitiful you open up some doors to some nasty things in your life you're gonna have people come in and say oh yeah you're right boy you were screwed you know <laughs> you have every reason to be negative let me doubt, doubt on you a little bit more so you can feel as bad as you want. There's a Jewish proverb that says, I ask not to have my burden lightened, but my shoulders broadened. You know, things happen. And you can let it go deep and you can hold on to it. Because that's your choice. You know? From the 12th chapter in Hebrews, it talks about the bitterness and the roots and the bitterness that goes into the roots and the roots of bitterness and all the fruit that comes from those roots are bitter. All the experiences are just not right, even though they may be smiling inside. Yeah, I really don't like you. Yeah? The insides are just not congruent with what Gandhi was talking about. You know? It's like thoughts words and actions you want them to be and so things happen we don't deny that things happen in our life they do but it doesn't have to determine your responsiveness to it if you want to be happy you do not live your life based upon the things that have happened out there but what is happening in here powerful video it's an ad marv can you show it you can throw away the ad at the end of this video let's see if you can see it Oops, bumped your head. Hop, Can hop, you hop, 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 Nikolai. Hop, hop, hop your foot. Blow it out. going to do today? Me again. <laughs> wow. You can be pitiful or you can be powerful. You, you get to design your life. You get to choose the perception in which you're going to walk into and experience. Alan Alden said that your assumptions are the windows in which you look at the world. Scrub them. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be able to see the reality, the true reality. That God is omnipresent and you are part of that. You know? And it doesn't mean you get everything you want. Our, 
um, Krishna was doing the transference of the great uh, yogic um, tradition to Arjuna about detachment, where he said, give it your all in what it is you do and be detached from the outcome. You don't want to be attached to the outcome. We get so clingy that it has to look a certain way that we make everybody around us miserable trying to make it be that certain way. And as long as you are clinging, it can create these pernicious effects that impact the movement of your expression. It disturbs your mind, and a mind that is disturbed cannot be fully present. The clinging and the grasping and holding and trying to make the outcome what it is you want it to be creates a schism. It splits the mind. It's coming from a place of doubt. But if you're the faith walker, it means you have already walked there and you know the outcome is assured and it may not be what I am looking like. The proviso here that Krishna was teaching Arjuna, it says, give your all, do your passion, do your dharma, give everything you can to what it is you're called to do and be detached from the outcome. If you want freedom, if you want happiness, if you want joy in the process. You, you've heard me talk about this book that I'm working on, waking up at four in the morning and putting in three hours before I take Trevor to school. I've been putting in eight, ten hours a day on my days off, just consumed. And you know what? It, the outcome, it doesn't matter if it makes it to number one on the New York Times bestseller. I am just in my dharma. I'm just in my passion. I'm just in my flow. It is such joy and happiness to get lost in the hours of creation that is going on. It is giving all that you have and letting go of what you think it has to look like that allows you to play with a sense of happiness the happiness is in the creation the happiness is in what it is that you are doing it is the life experience that you are in and if you get thrown a curve in life if you end up without a leg in your world if things are not moving the direction you thought it was supposed to be you can become pitiful you can get into blaming or by design you say oh well I'm doing what I can and it feels good. And this is what I am bringing to the world. It's a joyous place to be, an atmosphere of love and joy. Not I'm trying to make it love and joy, but I am that experience. That is the reality of what is going on in life and the world. And stuff. When you want that with all that you have, Ramakrishna, uh, Sri Ramakrishna to be more appropriate, talked about don't seek enlightenment unless you seek it like a guy whose hair is on fire is seeking the pond you know <laughs> that's how you do your dharma that's how you do your call that's how you do your thing that's how it's you how you do life with that great expression and you go for it with every part of your being and if it your longing doesn't come about and it's not met call that life <laughs> It's just life. It's the way it is. But don't allow that disappointment, if you would, to shrink your vision. Don't allow yourself to believe in the lesser. You know? Because you catch the vision of that reality. And through your meditations and connection, you begin to see that truth. Like that faith walker who has already seen the substance of things that have not come. The substance and the evidence of things that are yet to be. They have walked in that place. They know it is the truth. They know it is a reality that is already so. They have entered into a new dimension. They have entered into a new frequency, a new vibration, a new, a new level of expression that is seeking to come forth that is beyond the five senses. It is beyond the mind's conceptual thinking of how it can be done. It is a morphing into being that in this world. And it is not caught up with the lesser fears and the, and the distractions. It is the single-mindedness for which you have been called in this world that will bring you the joy, that will bring you the happiness. When you say, use me, I surrender that. I'm willing to hang out in the uncertainty and the doubt and still be happy because I am being used by life itself to express itself in this world because God is everywhere. This presence is emanating through me. It is omnipresent. It is not denominational. God is not a Christian. God is not a, a Buddhist. God is not a, a Jew. God is not Hindu. God is not a Muslim. You know, it, it is all those things. 
all those religions are like teaching the same stuff. If you want to know the truth, kind of drop off the dogmas. You know, their practices may be different because the cultures from which they came are different, but they're all talking about a one God, you know, the non-dualistic expression of spirit. They're talking about the one power, the one presence. They're talking of, all talking about the golden rule. They're all attempting to take you to that magnificent place in consciousness that is so much more than what you know. And so as I begin to let go and open up and realize I am not my history. Yeah? I'm not my past experiences. I'm not the child only of my parents. I'm not what was. What I am is spirit that wants to move through your passion. I so want you to, to be able to believe that, that you, what it is you love is what will support you in this world. What it is you love is what is calling you forth. And you have got to go to that place and to feel it and sense it. And it doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter what people said. You want to live happiness by design. You've got to get to that place where you know who you are so you can become that greater expression. You do that through your prayer and you do that through your meditation. Daily. Daily, Christian. Can I get away with like 10 minutes maybe? Um, while I'm sitting down somewhere, you know, that's not it. It is daily committing to that. You know, it's like, Christian, you, you pray and you meditate every day. What, are you, are you a superman or something? And it's like, and you don't pray and meditate every day? You must be superhuman <laughs> to be able to function without that kind of connection in your life. I mean, I've got to assure you, you don't want to see me without prayer and meditation. It's like, leave Christian alone. He hasn't prayed and meditated yet. You know, me without prayer and meditation, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> and as you do, you're going to find such an ease and a grace and a happiness. You are a bridge from that greater possibility and that vision into this world. You become that place where heaven meets earth. And you won't be catching anything but heaven within your life and within your world and and it's from that place i just see the possibilities for us I, I want so much for you to be able to do what you love and know that faith that i was talking about that no not hoping and to know that if you do what you love you will prosper that you do what you love, you will be taken care of. If you follow that thing that wakes you up in the four in the morning and then you find your days off, you're doing that too. If you do what you love, you will be taken care of because that is what you've come here to do. My prayer is that you have as more faith in your inspiration than you do in your frustration in life. And as you do, you're not going to be able to help but to smile, you know? You know those folks who are in touch with it? They smile. And Thich Nhat Khan said, your smile makes this world more beautiful. My challenge is for you to find what makes you smile and do it. And you'll make this world more beautiful for us all. I love you. Let's keep it going as we bring Andrew Pettit back to our stage. With a broken heart Tell you where do you find The strength you need 
her answer the call The place to begin Is when you fall Where do you go when there's nowhere to go? Wondering how you're gonna live What do you feel when it all seems surreal? And there's nothing more to give Tell me who do you call when the chips are down And you face your fears alone That's when you reach down inside and become strong I can I can achieve what seems impossible I can Cause I'm a believer And I can If given a chance I'll seize the opportunity I'm someone who believes That I can No matter what the outcome is Over again you're looking ahead To find the answer to the quiz Tell me how do you get back up again Despite of how hard you fall You find out who you are Someone who believes mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that I That is Andrew Pettit, someone who believes he can. I believe, I believe. And that's the best I've ever heard you sing here. What power, oh my goodness. That came from that other dimension, for sure. Wow, that is just, wow, that is great stuff. Hey, this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to unite together in our givingness and the sharing of our support, the expression of our love. 
in uh, just knowing that our life is blessed. It has been touched by God and that Seaside is one of those places that reminds us of the presence of God. And as we continue to support that, which is a reminder of us, to us of that omnipresence expression of spirit, what we find is that expression having its expression as our very life. We cannot outgive God, but we can step into that wonderful flow of that infinite expression. So as you give, it moves you into that stream. It's an extension of your consciousness. It is a declaration of your belief beyond words. It is through action that you're decreeing your alignment with spirit. Are you in alignment with the spirit and, and, and the words and the actions, your thinking? And so I'd like to call our ushers forward at this time. I want to say thank you to this wonderful crew and thank you to those who mail in your contributions. It's greatly appreciated. And those that remember us with the auto tithe, that regular systematic support from your world into Seaside to support the ongoing activities. And to our, our home viewing audience, hello on the live streaming viewers out there. Thank you for your uh, mailed in support. It is greatly appreciated. And so I, I share this prayer of gratitude with the most abundant and generous of spiritual communities, knowing truly that this is a blessed moment where the fullness of the divine has its way through each and every one of us, where we become that very vortex of that abundant flow of life and become a place where we say yes, yes to the wonderful movement and expression that comes from that inexhaustible place, a place that is absolutely a, an outlet for the infinite. Resting in this wonderful flow, there is a peace and there is a security knowing that the good is not dependent upon anyone, anything, that truly that each of us is that nexus, that hub, that center of many streams of abundant flow of good. And so as each of us says yes to that desire to express that comes from within, we find all that is necessary ever to express this desire is right there. Live in this world of enough and sufficiency. And I say thank you for this realization that it is the truth. And I let go knowing that it is so. And so it is. So it is. Amen. Together, let us say our affirmation of abundance, which is, Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of Spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now. from Seaside, bringing on that wonderful Cinco de Mayo spirit, that's for sure. Thank you. And for Tim and any other Star Trek guys, uh, happy or may the fourth be with you. So, uh, but anyway, I, I stand before this bounty of uh, ever-expanding good, for truly it has been given in love, it has been given 
with joy and is received with a graciousness that is handled and sent forth in good stewardship to continue to do the good work. For I know that expression of spirit that moves through each and every one of us continues to enrich and, and bring forth the greater manifestation of the ever-expanding expression of life itself. So in love, we say thank you, Father, Mother, God, for this moment of expression and knowing that our lives are enriched for being in the wonderful flow and this joyous, happy expression continues to bring blessings to all that comes in contact. And so it is. Amen. All right. And this is Cindy Dietz, one of your board of trustees members. Thank you. Andrew, you were so good. That second song was the best I've ever seen. What power. What presence. Thank you. And I know your finals this week at school are good, and you enter UCLA in the fall with ease and grace. So... I look forward to hearing that. And the art department is blessed by your presence, for sure. Reverend Fran, joy to create Sundays with you always. Dr. Kathy, just love doing Sundays with you. Thank you for sharing. Giving us sound days, Ed. Giving us visuals day is Marv. And uh, Timothy, thank you for live streaming this for the world to see. Um, flowers are gorgeous. Deb Sadler, are you in here? No, you are out not washing cars with her husband. Jim, but it's Jim and Deb's anniversary, and they gave us the beautiful flowers, and Jim was heading up our car wash, but I want you to know that our teens rallied together and made a very conscientious choice after last week's Earth Day talk, along with the uh, water drought in California, not to wash cars as their fundraiser. And... Um, <clears throat> So after many years of doing that, they are now accepting donations for not washing your cars today. <laughs> and so uh, I, I assured them that they would surpass what they would do if they did the manual labor and let the water run out into the street. So they'll be happy to clean your windows and do the inside of your cars, but please assist them in going to camp uh, uh, next month. There's five from our community that want to go, and so they're in the midst of fundraising and help them out with that. Um, let's see. Today, I, I see in the back, we've got Stella selling pavers. We have got the Silver Circle that is available. Robin's raising her hand. We have the Mardi Gras, which you heard about earlier, where we're doing this crawfish boil. And they're going to throw a bunch of these red crustaceans on the table, and people actually eat those things and love it. So that is going on here in May. And uh, the music is Michelle Lundin and the whole Zydeco band and the Zydeco dancing. And they're going to be a parade and the horns and the music and the crowning or the coronation of the king and the queen and the, and the king cake or the baby cake or whatever that is. It is going to be a memorable night that it has free hurricane punch when you walk in. So you may not remember the night, but I'll tell you the next day how your behavior was. <laughs> so anyway, that's what's going on around here. Right as soon as I'm done talking, we've got a used book sale going on outside. We have the free basic beliefs class. If you want to know more about this philosophy, visit one of the side rooms back there, the Emerson Room. And Tuesday, my short three-week class on how to be a masterful manifester starts. And what I'm going to do, if you sign up today and put down your email clearly this afternoon or this evening, I'm going to send out one of the chapters from my book, Living on the Mountaintop, about abundance. And the class is going to be kind of premised on that foundation. So sign up today with your email and I'll be happy to send you this chapter that no one has seen. Um, but anyway, hey guys, how's it going? Anybody want to share anything? Oh, okay, why don't you tell us? We're all this library. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody else? Yes. We were talking about fear. Theater, wow. And how to get over it. Oh, fear and how to get over it. That's good. I don't know. We're talking about fear. You talk we're about talking fear? about fear. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, I got it. What you got? Um, I'm grateful for family. Thank no. for family. Thankful for family. That's a good thing. I like that. So, Okay, I'm sure there's more things in the program I could be talking about, but I'm going to pray because healing is the thrust of our movement since its conception. And um, it's from our own fruits we take our authority. And so I want to invite any of our religious science licensed practitioners to stand as well as any of the ministers and students uh, just and I invite all of us to feel this upliftment of uh, assurance with these faith walkers who have been there and they know it's not a conceptual kind of experience it's a deep knowing it is a faith of a substance yes of things seen 
I feel it, I sense it, I speak from this place where there's love in this room. There's healing that goes on in this room. There's laughter, there's music, there's applause. It's God, that omnipresent, that omni-activity of the divine itself. Open, feel good. Allow yourself to have the experience of happiness without quantifying or judging. Just open up to the blessings that are in this moment, in this time, in this space. Don't have that mind split, but be present. For it's in the present that the presence is known. And I speak from this place of connectedness. I am spirit expressing the revelation of wholeness. That is the truth of being. That truth of this community is every member of our wonderful spiritual family is moving to an ever greater conscious connection with Source. And all dis-ease, any lack, discomfort is dissolved as that schism of separation is healed. It doesn't matter what the prognosis may be. There is one underlying cause of all things, and that is that sense of separation from the Source. And so as each says yes within the own heart and being, there is a shift that takes place in consciousness that facilitates the wonderful flow of life, that infinite intelligence that guides the universe is the same wisdom that knows how to heal and, and, and to make whole the expression of your very life. And so I stand here as a witness to the shift taking place and this alignment that is going on and the joy that is expressing and the new levels of happiness and the new frequency and the vibration of being that just morphs the old conditions into the nothingness from which they came and what emerges is a greater expression of the self, the becoming of that which you are intended to be, living out that dharma with full passion and full force and full commitment, not attached to the outcome, but a willingness to be in that joyous expression of life. There's nothing unlike it that can remain within your world, and the body heals itself. The abundance flows. The relationships become juicy and intimate and wonderful, for this is the natural outpicturing of the law of mind when one chooses to live with the divine reality as the impetus for being in this I am grateful for it is the truth of seaside for every prayer in our prayer request chest is answered now finding expression in the lives of those that have put in the request for our beloved Sonny Goodwin who underwent knee operation this weekend it is a success not only in the mind of God but within her physical body for our wonderful students in the school of ministry that have committed to their dharma to their call to their path that they have found that this commitment energizes revitalizes and uplifts them in their soul expression and all that is necessary to support that is in place and we send forth into this world wonderful new ministers ministering to that light Something good's going on. I can feel it. Do you feel that? Say yes to that with your heart and your soul. Say yes to that good that is seeking expression through you. You are the portal. You are the, the conduit for it to flow. And as it flows, the good is relevant within your world and life. And I am thankful that this is your truth. It is my truth. It is the unfolding of God's grace and good here and now that I am grateful for. I'm not grateful to anyone or anything. I just stand in awesome appreciation for the life expression itself. And I let go to that. I surrender that. It's not my will. It's not my way. It's not my words. It is thy way. It is the Spirit's way. It is God life itself taking form in our world and so it is Amen There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I did not know the love of God who was at hand. But now I can say, if you are discouraged and trying to make it through just for one more day, you gotta let it go. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. You know there's no more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am. You know that.
One last announcement I didn't make is Gourmets for God is back. It is time to figure out what meal you want to present and invite people into your home and for a magical kind of evening. So check that out in the back. But right now, my life is filled with happy moments. Let's say that together. My life is filled with happy moments. Touch your heart and say that. My life is filled with happy moments. One more time. My life is filled with happy moments. And our song of grace. Well, it shines on us all. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. Well, Hallelujah. 